this is going to be a uh, the first in a series of videos that I'm going to do on Twisted Tales, um, specifically about Beauty and the Beast. So the first video is going to be a review of Liz Braswell's As Old As Time. It's actually a Disney sanctioned twist on the tale that you know. Um, and pretty much I'm going to be comparing it to the original animated version of the film. I haven't seen the new version. This isn't supposed to be a twist of whatever the live version is. Um, is actually a twist on the animated story. And it gets into a lot of the history behind Belle's mother and, you know, um, like it says specifically on the back cover, what if Belle's mother cursed a beast? So it really gets into her story, the story of her relationship with Maurice, um, and it really kind of diverts from the main movie. So I'm going to consult my notes here because I, I actually took pretty good notes on this. Um, so the average Goodreads rating is 3.86. I gave it three stars. Um, it's broken down into three parts. Um, part one is really the part that is the backstory alternating with uh, scenes taken from the animated film. Um, at the end of part one, it's a scene in the West Wing where Belle discovers a rose and the story diverts from there. Um, and then part two and three is really the um, Belle working with the Beast to figure out how to reverse the curse. And then part three is kind of like, you know, the whole resolution aspect of things. Um, so... This book is actually the third in a series. It is the first one, the first two were based on Aladdin and Sleeping Beauty. And on Goodreads, they actually got bad reviews. Um, this one, I haven't read the first two, but based on what people were writing on Goodreads, this is probably the best of the three. Um, like I said, part one really follows the story, the, the film halfway, halfway uh, faithfully. And it really diverts in the West Wing scene when Belle destroys the rose. So instead of um, the beast coming and kind of clamping down on the glass case like, no, don't touch, um, she actually reaches out, grabs a rose, and it disintegrates in her hand. And that's when the curse really starts to take hold and the story moves from there. Um, I, I generally like the story. I like what she did with, you know, what if Belle you know, really acted on her impulsiveness and really kind of screwed the beast over and kind of taking it from there. I did really enjoy it. And I think she brought up a lot of cool aspects and a lot of cool questions like, oh, well, you know, what if, you know, da da da. Um, I'll, I'll go through some of the things I really appreciate first. And again, I'm going to be glancing at my notes because I did actually take a lot of notes on this. Um, first off, the whole premise of the book is that Belle's mother is actually an enchantress and she is actually the one that shows up on that winter's night, offers him the rose in exchange for shelter and gets shunned. Um, you know, and it's kind of interesting, you know, I never really thought about it, but like, okay, why was she out? Blah, 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 you know, why a rose? Da, da, da. And it does really kind of get into that backstory a lot. And I think it provides a pretty good explanation and it does kind of paint Belle's mother not as, um, this demigod or you know not less as a goddess or a um i don't know there, there's not really a good way to put it um pretty much she's she's not a good fairy okay she's a very flawed character and um she acts a lot out of pride and haste um and you see a lot of that in bell as well um it turns out um, in the story that Frederick Dark, one of their friends, who is kind of a magic character, manages to quote unquote cut out his magic. He is a surgeon and he essentially does brain surgery on himself and cuts out the magic part of his brain. Um, and it turns out that he takes, he arranges the kidnapping of all these other magical creatures and tries to cut the magic out of them. Um, 
And I thought it was kind of interesting, the concept of him searching for this biological seat of magic in the body. Um, kind of like when scientists, especially previously, um, would search for the biological seat of the soul. And, you know, they would weigh the bodies of people who were dying to see, okay, you know, does the soul have weight? When they die, does their weight change? You know, and I thought it was kind of cool, kind of hearkening back to that era of science and you know some of the questions that we still have about you know the nature of the soul and what separates us from animals um gaston's full show of ignorance so you know in the movie he's you know gaston you know and you know being gaston has taken on its own meaning in pop culture nowadays he's kind of like the uh the patriarchy the anti-feminist character um in this book you really see it on more on a bigger scale and it's not just that he's a macho head it's that he is truly ignorant in the sense of um you know it's not just that he's bigoted it's not just that he's all about looks it's that he is truly ignorant um you know not even stupid just ignorant um Belle in this story, I kind of mentioned before that she her she reflects a lot of her mother's impulsivity and brashness. And there are a lot of scenes like Belle. Belle is like really annoying in this book. Um, you see her as more of a petulant child, um, kind of catching up with her abandonment issues. You know, the mother casts this forgetting spell so that in order to protect people, that people won't remember her or the magical people. And it, um, you know, as she, as Belle comes to terms with, oh yeah, you know, well, what did happen to my mom? I kind of just, you know, she was just never there. I never thought about it. Um, she really kind of starts catching up with these abandonment issues. Um, the bookseller is Belle's godfather. That was interesting. Yeah, that was, I mean, it's cool in a way. It's kind of awesome, but at the same time, it's kind of like, hmm, okay. All right. Um, Mrs. Potts. I really felt bad for Mrs. Potts in this story because, um, you you know, you you hear about the magical creatures being kidnapped and you assume they're dead, their bodies never turn up and everything. And then you find out that Mrs. Potts, the teapot, her husband was actually a murder victim for it for helping magical creatures escape. He himself wasn't magical, but he helped magical creatures escape. Um, you know, and Belle and the Beast find his body and, you know, they're searching for clues on his body and such. And that was kind of an interesting, interesting aspect to the story. You kind of get into this murder, mystery, thriller type uh, part of the story. So that was kind of cool, I thought. Um, and then um, the book's overall commentary kind of on mob mentality and ethnic cleansing you know again these magical creatures are being kidnapped rounded up um you know they're hiring kids to scrawl nasty stuff on the doors where magical people live um you know and as people go missing you know people turn a blind eye don't want to talk about it you know so it, it, if you sit down and think about it it's a very interesting commentary on that um things i took issues with the biggest thing I took issue with was some of her writing style. And I have specific examples, and I'll actually pull the book for some of these. This first one, this first one just drove me nuts. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, not that one. This one. There was a mighty clap, like the largest crack of lightning in the history of the world struck the tower. You know, I read that, and the first thing I thought was, wow. This is like the biggest thing ever. You know, some excited five-year-old running into the room. It was the biggest thing in the history of the world. You know, it's just like, you couldn't have done better than that. Like, it was the biggest one in the history of the world. Like, oh my goodness. You know, you could have spent, you know, 10 extra minutes on that one. You know, coming up with a better way to phrase that. Um, let me see. 275. And I did actually bookmark these pages as well. Um, this one was interesting. So Belle's talking to the Beast about his uh, his parents' kingdom. And she says, you know, I wonder if maybe your whole kingdom was cursed long before my mother showed up. 
disease, ethnic cleansing, a king and queen who didn't care for their people. Um, you know, and kind of the thing that popped in my mind was, you know, one, and this is something I don't know, um, you know, was ethnic cleansing like actually a phrase that would have been in the common tongue at that point? Like, would that have been something that Belle as a person from a provincial town, well read as she was, is that really a phrase that she would have used? Um, and it kind of struck me as, you know, I couldn't, it felt like the author was trying to provide an additional commentary on modern times, you know, and differentiating between a story that resonates with current events and a book trying to be important and trying to say something about it. I felt like that fell into the latter and it really kind of took me out of that story. This is pretty, this is a pretty quick read. Um, you know, I was able to finish it in two days. It's 484 pages. It's overall quick read, but that was one of those things. It just kind of sucked me out of the story. Like, wait, did she just say that? Like, would she have said that? Like, that's, that's odd. So, you know, but if, if you know, you know, in the 18th century, was ethnic cleansing a, a phrase in the common language? Let me know in the comments. Um, and then 429. What was on 429? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Belle tried the handle. It was locked. She closed her eyes and said a few choice words she had learned from reading novels. Again, that's one of those things that just kind of sucked me out of the story. But in this case, it was the feeling that she was, the author was trying to meet a, a word count. You know, like I said, this book is 484 pages. Like, you got the word count down. But it's just like, you know, and we get it. Like, she reads. That's what she's known for. She reads. You know, we get it. You could have just said, you know, she closed her eyes and cursed under her breath. Nuff said, move on, but she said a few choice words she had learned from reading novels. Come on, cut it down. Unnecessary, you know. So it was just stuff like that through the book that, you know, it's going, it's going and going, and then you stop. Like, you hit a word, a phrase, a, a description, a sentence, and you're just like, ugh, like, really? So... You know, she she lost points with me for the for some of that stuff. Um, but overall, like I said, it's a good book. It's a quick read, um, despite its length. It does bring up a lot of interesting questions um, based on the story and based on, you know, okay, well, what if that had actually happened? You know, um, you know, just looking at all the sub characters and the subplots and everything. I thought it was really good. Um, like I said, this is going to be the first of a series of videos looking at Twisted Tales based on Beauty and the Beast. Uh, the next one I'll be reading, um, is shorter. It, as far as I know, it's not Disney sanctioned, but, you know, we'll, we'll see the kind of take they go with. Um, so far I started reading it and instead of one witch, it's like three witches keeping an eye on him and it's kind of weird so far. I'm not entirely a fan so far. Sorry about that guys, so I didn't realize until I was making the video that it actually cut off. But that's not the worst that ever happened to me, I've had entire videos not record. So I'm still ahead of the game. But anyway, so that is my review. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, hit me up if you like this video, if you want to see other videos in this series, or you want to see my other review of other books. Hit the subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you on future videos.